Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the new update for the EZRB Pro add-on version 1.1.6. Let's dive in. This update is entirely focused on the RB emitter panel. We've added new options to, to give you more control and I think you're going to love it. As you can see, the panel is now called RB Emitter 2.1, reflecting the new changes. I've simplified the UI a bit to make things more intuitive. Let's start, we have an empty and a sphere. We're going to emit the sphere from the empty. First, select the empty and press emit. You'll see a new collection created. Move the sphere into this new collection. I press emit again, and there you have it, quick and easy emission. Now, let's talk about scaling. If you select one of the emitted objects and scale it in edit mode, the scale of all the objects will update automatically. This is because they are instances and are linked. Any changes made in edit mode will affect all instances, as we've explained before. Finally, since we're working with a sphere, you can set the, the collision type to sphere for more accurate results. Now, let's animate the empty and change the velocity value in the Z direction to a negative value. This will make the objects shoot downward. Next, set the emitter size to zero so it emits from a single point. As you can see, the emitter moves with the empty, nothing too interesting yet. But watch what happens when we rotate the empty. Now the emitter follows the empty's rotation, which wasn't possible before. This means you can move and rotate the empty however you like, creating some very interesting effects. Now, let's talk about the advanced option. When we activate this option, you'll see additional settings appear. You can now choose the emitter shape to be grid, circle, or sphere. This allows you to emit objects in consistent and specific patterns. Let's try emitting from a grid with these settings. As you can see, this is what the emission looks like. Now, let's increase the PN value, which represents the number of points. Keep in mind that this number is squared, meaning the total number of points will be the value multiplied by itself. As you can see, we now have a perfect grid pattern. You can increase the number of points as much as you like. Next, let's talk about P run. This value randomizes the emission rate from the points. It doesn't randomize the, the points themselves, but rather the rate at which objects emit from each point. As you can see, the points remain consistent, but the emission becomes random from point to point. And just like before, the emitter can follow the empty's rotation and location, giving you virtually infinite possibilities to create unique effects. Now, let's talk about the circle shape. It follows a similar logic to the grid shape, but includes a very interesting option we'll cover shortly. As mentioned, the PN value controls the number of points. However, this time, the value is not squared, meaning the number you enter will directly determine the, the total number of points in the circle. As you can see, the emission forms a circular pattern. You can increase or decrease the number of points as needed. The PRAN value works the same way as in the grid shape, randomizing the emission rate of the points without altering their positions. Now, 
Let's discuss the normals option when you activate this option. A new slider appears below the velocity settings called V normals. Activating this option causes the velocity of the emission to follow the circle's normal directions instead of the axis. This overrides the default velocity. Here's how it works if the V normals value is positive. Objects will shoot outward from the circle. If the value is negative, objects will emit inward toward the circle. Keep in mind for negative values, ensure the value is lower than the emitter size. For example, if the emitter size is 10, use a value between 3 and 0.5 for the best results. Disabling gravity can create fascinating effects as well. If you want to return to emitting along the axis velocity, simply disable the normals option and the velocity values will apply as usual. As always, the emitter will follow the empty's rotation and location, giving you endless creative possibilities. Now, Let's move on to the sphere shape. This was already an option in previous versions, so there's nothing particularly new here except that it now also follows the rotation of the empty. Next, let's talk about the X sphere shape. This shape was an experimental addition from me. It's still not perfect, but I plan to improve it over time. The X sphere shares similar options with the circle shape, but works in a spherical form. You can experiment with this shape to create some very interesting effects. It also includes the normals option, which allows you to emit objects along the normals of the sphere shape. This gives you greater control over the emission direction and opens up more creative possibilities. Finally, we have the line shape. This shape is similar to the grid shape, but instead of emitting from a grid, it emits from points along a line. The PN value controls the number of points on the line. The PRAN value randomizes the emission rate from these points, just like with other shapes. And to emphasize once more, this shape can follow the empty's rotation and location, giving you greater control over the emission direction. So, that's everything new in the RB emitter panel. Now you can create some truly interesting effects with rigid body physics using these shapes, which allow for cool and consistent patterns. Let me know if you like this new update. I'm excited to see what you guys can create with it. I'll also be making some detailed tutorials soon to show you how to use these new options to create cool effects. For now, I'll let you enjoy experimenting with the new update. Before we move on, there's one more thing I want to share with you. I recently added a new option, Align Rotation. This option allows you to align the emitted object's rotation with the empty's rotation. This feature is only available for the grid, line and circle shapes. Let's see the difference. When it's off, the emitted objects maintain their fixed rotation throughout the emission. When it's on, the emitted object's rotation follows the emitter's rotation, giving you more control over the effect.
Let's say you want to emit from the grid shape and ensure a consistent grid pattern. If you emit using a random total count, you might get a complete grid, but sometimes you'll only see a half or quarter grid depending on the total count you set. Here's a tip to guarantee perfect and consistent grid patterns. I decide how many points you want for the grid. I take that number, multiply it by itself and square it, and then multiply the result by another number, which determines the repetition of the grid. Using this method, you get a perfectly consistent grid pattern every time. This same logic applies to the circle and line shapes, but for those, the total count is simply the number of points multiplied by another number for repetition. Also, don't forget that you can experiment with the speed loss and rotation loss of the objects. Uh, these settings can help you create effects that weren't possible before. Combine them with the empties rotation and location and you'll unlock some very interesting effects. I'll leave it to your imagination to think about all the amazing things you can create with the new RB emitter. There are truly endless possibilities for cool effects with these shapes. You just need to spend some time to understand the logic behind them. Now that we have this tool, I'll do my best to create weekly tutorials sharing tips and tricks to help you achieve and create awesome effects, I'm sure. I'm sure there are people out there who are even more talented and they'll be able to create incredible effects with this tool. And that said, keep in mind that there are some limitations. We'll discuss those in the next section of the video. Once you understand these limitations, you'll be able to save time and avoid potential issues that might arise. If you're trying to emit objects with a negative velocity, make sure the velocity value is less than the emitter size. This ensures that the objects stay within the boundary of the shape. Keep this in mind when using negative velocity with these shapes to avoid any unexpected collisions. Another issue you might encounter is when the emission seems to explode unexpectedly. This happens if your original object has location or rotation keyframes. These keyframes interfere with the emitter's logic causing this problem. To fix this issue, remove any keyframes related to movement location or rotation from the objects you intend to emit. This will ensure smooth emission without unexpected behavior. Another issue you may encounter is related to the rotation of the objects. As mentioned earlier, if you import objects from another source, their rotation mode is often set to quaternion. This mode is not compatible with the RB emitter. To fix this issue, change the object's rotation mode to Euler. Apply the object's rotation by pressing Ctrl plus A and selecting rotation. This will resolve the problem and ensure the objects work correctly with the RB emitter. Another issue you may encounter is related to emitting a high number of objects, especially with high poly models. When emitting a large number of objects, it may require a significant amount of RAM. 
although we are using instances for the objects which means they won't take up much RAM in the viewport. Once you bake the simulation and include textures, materials and lighting, the RAM usage during the final render can become quite high, so make sure you have enough RAM capacity before attempting to emit a large number of high poly objects, otherwise you might experience difficulties when rendering your animation. This issue isn't directly related to the add-on but rather to how Blender handles rigid body physics and rendering, and to optimize performance, consider reducing the poly count of your objects or using simpler textures and lighting setups if you're working with high object counts. Keeping your objects and scene optimized ensures you'll achieve the best performance and avoid issues like slowdowns or blender crashes. I think that's it guys, I wanted to keep this update video short while covering the most important stuff. There are other details we'll talk about in the detailed tutorials. Next week, I'll show you the techniques I used to create these effects. I know some of you who are experienced with rigid body simulations may not need these tutorials. You can just dive in and use the tool to bring your ideas to life. But these tutorials are especially for those who are new to rigid body simulations and need guidance to get started with the add-on. So if you have cool ideas, go ahead and grab the add-on and start creating. And if you need help or have any questions, feel free to join my Discord server and ask me there. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Peace.